welcome to Apologia and another edition of Ham and Egg News, where we react to Ken Ham reacting to things. Well, there's an article we'll probably be covering next week that talks about, so um, Ken Ham is going to be speaking at a homeschool conference in Alberta, Canada, and it's hit the news big time up oh, there. Yeah. Evening, I'm Andrew Brown in the CBC Calgary studio. Our top story tonight, keynote creationist. The Alberta Home Education Association is facing criticism for booking the creationist Ken Ham as a speaker at its annual conference. Um, and it's amazing to see how the, the, re, the, just the reaction to that, like how could this happen oh my, in Canada? Those, those you know, creationists. How could we teach creation How dare Canada? people believe the Bible? Wow. Yeah. And it's mocking and, yeah. and, and you see those types of attacks. Mocking and attacking by the nice Canadians? That doesn't sound right. Top U.S. creationists invitation as keynote speaker for Alberta homeschooling convention draws fire. So this is up in Canada. I had to laugh at this picture of Ken because that's like a really old picture of Ken. Ken Ham wasn't on the panel, but he did tweet about this. Love the photo they chose. Not. They really wanted me to look good for this attack article. So I'm a science denier. Typical false rhetoric used by those intolerant of biblical creationists to try to intimidate and undermine their integrity. Oh, wow. What an enormous problem. A biblical creationist is going to speak at a Christian homeschool conference in Canada? And one person complained, and it's headline news as this person wants to force his anti-creationist views on everyone else. Oh, just one person complained. Okay. Well, who is this dastardly rogue Canuck? I see that Answers in Genesis posted an article written by the head of the new Answers in Genesis Canada division, Calvin Smith. Some of you may remember my previous introduction to Calvin, best known as the host of the Creation Magazine Live TV show. Now, um, the, one of the first, well, the first man that ever uh, led an expo uh, expedition down. And the article stated that the convention was facing heat for inviting a leading United States creationist to speak. Yet throughout the piece, only one person was referenced who was vocal in opposition. And who is the dissenter? Paul Enns, a disgruntled father from Calgary. A disgruntled father? I don't even know what that means, but it sounds bad. Who says he used to be a Christian. He says he used to be a Christian? When everybody knows there's no such thing as a former Christian? He runs a YouTube channel against creationists. And a YouTuber? Paul Enns runs a YouTube channel that's aimed at debunking the teachings of Ken Ham. He lives in Calgary and he joins me by phone. Good morning. Joining me now is Paul Enns. Paul says he was inspired by Ken Ham's lessons on creationism, but it actually inspired him to change his faith. Paul Enns is a Calgary father of three. He also runs a YouTube channel dedicated to debunking the myths of creationism and the teachings of Ken Ham in particular. Paul Enns is in Calgary. Hello. Well, everyone knows our Ham and Egg News policy. Everyone mentioned by name by Answers in Genesis are welcome on the show. So, I reached out to this Paul Enns. Hello, Paul. Thanks for inviting me. Hello, Paul. Nice to have you here. He was quoted by the CBC as saying, As a citizen of Alberta and a father, I am very concerned that Ken Ham is being brought in on multiple levels. Primarily, that he is a science denier. He denies evolution. He denies the age of the Earth. Does, has any scientist always been there? No. Does any scientist know everything? One of the individuals they interviewed said that Ken is a science denier. So who should you always trust first, God or the scientist? Exactly. And I want you to always remember that, boys and girls. You always trust God's word first before any scientist or any human being. It's always interesting when somebody juxta, you know, puts those two beside each other like that. That is quite a juxtaposition, isn't it? And a relatively easy one, since Ken went on Facebook Live the very next morning after my interview to speak to a group of children, demonstrating clearly the kind of indoctrination that he considers to be education. One quote from Enns declares, Unfortunately, Ken's material is so anti-science, anti-education, his entire ministry is based upon keeping people back and holding back ideas. In the big picture, we have one atheist who isn't happy about Ken coming to Alberta. This is similar to one of Ken's three in a row tweets reacting to my interview. That one person complained. For the record, at no point prior to this interview did I complain on any public forum about Ken's attendance to the conference. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation contacted me because they were running a story already and heard that I was a local expert on Ken Ham. 
They asked me to appear on a local morning talk show to talk about who Ken is. Then they asked me to appear again later that day. Then the next day I was asked to be on the 6 o'clock TV news. And then the next day I was asked to be on national radio. For those who've been writing me or commenting on the news stories, let me make this clear. At no point did I ever contact anyone in the media about Ken's scheduled appearance. While thousands of Christians are excited about one of the most dynamic Bible-defending speakers whose speaking schedule is absolutely maxed out, taking the time to fly from the United States to share with us. But whom does the CBC feature? (laughs) The atheist. I cannot speak to how many Christians may or may not be excited about Ken coming to Alberta, but I can tell you that in my last two interviews, they included Irving Hexham, a Christian and professor of religious studies at the University of Calgary, and opposing voice Judy Arnell president of the Alberta Home Education Parent Society. The evolution and the age of the earth is a very different type of science. It's a science that deals with the past, um, that's not observable, testable, or repeatable, and that really depends on your authority for knowing about the past. Science never considers authority, only evidence. And new evidence trumps the work of even the most revered minds. And it's true. Repeatability, or more precisely, reproducibility, is among the main principles of the scientific method but not in the way AIG likes to espouse. Reproducibility is the ability for different researchers to get the same research results using the same raw data as the original researchers. For example, blood spatter analysis from the murder scene could be conducted by multiple teams. They should find identical distance measurements, color matching, directionality markers, and other observations. This would be considered reproducible science. Same photos, same conclusions by different teams. The murder doesn't have to be repeated for it to be science. For example, science has determined water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level on our planet. Anyone can repeat that experiment in their kitchen. But has anyone observed one creature turn into a different kind of creature with novel forms, functions, and features during their own lifetime? So, according to Answers in Genesis, any process that takes longer than a single human lifetime can never be studied or understood by the scientific method. Now, scientists believe that it takes Neptune over 164 years to orbit the sun. But has any human ever observed the entire orbit during their own lifetime? By AIG standards, we can never really know if Neptune is circling the sun or not. I took a look at this further using examples of mayflies in my star formation video, if you'd like further examples and discussion. It's just such a, a, a false view. It's misrepresenting the other side without uh, really taking time to engage the arguments themselves. If there's a single human on Earth who takes time to engage Answers in Genesis arguments themselves, it's me. Engage your arguments is what I do every day. Have you seen my channel? Your boss has. And one thing this gentleman says... This gentleman... Ooh, I like that better than disgruntled father. Let's go with this gentleman. Is that he's the provincial curriculum or a proper science education for their children is going to be denied if you let Ham speak and if you uh, teach from the creationist perspective. That's really a, a type of special pleading. I'm going to make up my own definition of what science is and say you deny it. Redefining science? Who's really redefining science here? The artificial separation of operational science... Or is it observational science? You guys are all over the map on this one. And historical science is entirely a construct fabricated by creationists and championed by Answers in Genesis specifically. Even a field like archaeology is observable, testable, and repeatable. No wonder so many Canadians, including Muslims, Jews, Sikhs, agnostics, atheists, and so on, are beginning to choose to homeschool their children rather than having a specific agenda imposed on their children. Yes, because clearly Ken Ham's teaching is the opposite of imposing an agenda upon the children. Fiction means not true. What does fiction mean? Not true. And we're told a lot of things that are not true today. Uh, about dinosaurs. For instance, that they lived millions of years ago. I would say that's not true. But I object to Calvin's attempt to conflate my objection to Answers in Genesis curriculum with an objection to the general concept of homeschooling. I said as much during the interview. Certainly, I, I don't deny that there, for some children that homeschooling is, is an excellent way to, to learn. And I'm not debating either the right of Ken to come speak to these groups or the right of anyone to homeschool their own children. What I really... I'm fighting for is the minimum standards. By bringing Ken in, I, I really think 
uh, that it signals a bit of a lack of a judgment and or even a even deliberate defiance of provincial curriculum because what Ken is teaching is so opposite to what we would say is, is normal science education. It's true that some agnostics and atheists homeschool their kids. Do you suppose they're trying to avoid specific agendas like Calvin suggests? Do you know any agnostics or atheists who homeschool their kids? Well, one. But he's not going to like it. Oh, hey, Paul. What was it you dragged me out of bed for? I know it's noon, but since we homeschool our kids, we get to sleep as long as we want. Oh, who am I kidding? My kids have us out of bed by 7.30 at the latest. Anyways, what was this all about? Homeschooling or something? Oh, you know, Answers in Genesis is asserting that the only reason people homeschool their children is to avoid having an agenda forced upon them. So, as some of you may be aware, I have chosen to homeschool my three children. Now, a good chunk of the homeschooling community have decided on it for religious reasons. They don't want their kids exposed to secular education. They want to be able to teach them all about their views on God and religion at home, where beliefs won't be challenged until they're much older and more firmly indoctrinated. As an atheist, this is obviously not my reason. Basically, for me, it comes down to a quality of education. At their current grade levels, my wife and I are familiar with the material that they need to learn, and a one-on-one -on -one education is always more effective than sitting them in a large classroom. Our kids' education is top priority, though, so if we ever find that we are having difficulty providing them with the education they need, they will be sent to school. Or if we just get sick of them being home, whichever comes first. Does the province provide any kind of oversight into what your kids learn? As far as oversight goes, it's done on a province-by-province -province basis. I'm not familiar with how it's done in Alberta, but it probably isn't too different from how it's done here in Ontario. Essentially, in Ontario, there is no oversight. All we have to do is write a letter of intent to homeschool to the local school board every year, and that's it. No investigations, no tests, no questions, nothing. If your kids were never in school, you can even get away without ever writing the letter of intent because there will be no record at the school board of your child even existing. Theoretically, the provincial school attendance counselor can start an investigation if they have reason to believe your child is not receiving a satisfactory education at home, and the result of the investigation will be a hearing which will either force you to send the kid to school or allow you to continue homeschooling. This doesn't happen very often, though, and would usually only come up in extreme cases. The only time a test of any sort is required is if you're enrolling your child in an actual school. And there's also the problem of not being able to receive a high school diploma. If you homeschool through high school, the only way to get an Ontario Secondary School Diploma, or OSSD, is if you enroll in an accredited online school or correspondence school. You can, of course, get your GED after you turn 18, but that doesn't always look the greatest when job searching. It's possible to get a post-secondary education without an OSSD or GED, but your school options will be severely limited, as not all post-secondary schools have separate admission procedure for homeschoolers. Also, I have a bit of a problem with the Ontario Federation of Teaching Parents. They word things in a way that encourages parents to avoid doing things in a conventional way. Uh, for instance, in their section devoted to helping parents decide if they should homeschool during the high school years, where they are discussing whether or not to enroll in an accredited online or correspondence school, they say the diploma itself may not be necessary depending on what career the young person plans on pursuing and what path they plan to take to get there. Now, I get that there can be value in doing things unconventionally, but conventions are important. I mean, deciding when your child is 14 that they won't want a job that requires a high school degree is unfair to your child. When I was 14, the career path I had decided on for myself was completely different than what it was when I was 19. And that was completely different than what actually ended up happening. So basically, the Ontario Federation of Teaching Parents is encouraging you to limit your child's options from an age where it's entirely likely that they will change their minds after that point. Now, personally, I'm a fan of the take a year off between high school and college in order to better decide what you actually want to do with your life. So many people are stuck in unfulfilling jobs for decades because of career decisions they made as a teenager. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is if you do plan on homeschooling through high school, do it through an accredited online or correspondence school in order to give your child the most options when they're older. But this comes back to the oversight problem. There is essentially no government effort being made to ensure that the child being homeschooled are actually at the level that they're supposed to be at. Alberta is very similar with the Parent Association discouraging parents from taking funds in order to maximize their autonomy and ensure no one sees what they're teaching, all to the detriment of their children's long-term continuing education. Well, thanks for having me on, Paul. It's always a pleasure. 
The CBC article presents an emotional plea for the children's future. N says he would like to spare both my children and other children from being kind of behind in life because they follow these backwards teachings. We need to teach children that they are all created in the image of God and thus have inherent worth, that there are moral absolutes which govern behavior in a civilized society, and that there is true meaning to life which gives us ultimate hope. I want to teach kids about science. That's all philosophy, which is also fine to teach, but they are unrelated fields. The age of the earth has nothing to do with morality or finding meaning to life, or, according to millions of Christians, even anything to do with the existence of God. Most Christians believe in an old universe. Instead, evolutionists say we should teach them they are the result of chance, that there is no absolute morality, and thus there is no meaning to life. Is this supposedly good for the kids? Just look at the change in morality and ethics in the Western culture in the last three generations as a metric for gauging this type of progressive agenda. Is Calvin suggesting that people are less moral today than in the 1950s, roughly three generations ago? Back when Rosa Parks was arrested for not giving her bus seat to a white person and racial segregation laws were in full effect? When Alan Turing was sentenced to chemical castration for being gay? When the publishers of the novel Peyton Place faced prison for having crude characters in it? Animal testing was the norm. Corporal punishment was standard practice for child rearing. Women had far fewer rights and the law prevented divorce for even domestic abuse. What changes in immorality and ethics are we concerned about here? Bathing suit styles? Although N's claims AIG is anti-education and the entire ministry is based upon keeping people back and holding back ideas, he himself said in a radio interview that he feels all materials that everyone would have to buy would have to be on a list of pre-approved materials and or that parents would have to put a lesson plan together that would be approved by someone so that they have enough science in them that our children won't be hindered. Again, the science ENDS is talking about isn't the type of science that produces technology like an MRI scanning machine invented by the brilliant scientist and biblical creationist Dr. Raymond Damadian. Four scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize for inventing the MRI. None of them were Dr. Raymond Damadian. I think it's time to find a new example. He's arguing that the story of evolution be mandated in schools and taught as fact. So who is actually advocating holding back ideas? Why should parents be forced by the government to teach their children only the humanist creation story and not biblical creation? Who exactly would be that someone who needs to approve what children are taught? <laughs> An atheist like him? We have elected officials and experts appointed by those officials who set curriculum standards, just as we have officials who determine minimum standards for health and safety. As I said in my national radio interview, I absolutely respect everyone's right to, to any religious beliefs that they want to hold. But in this country, we actually hold some things above the right to religion. So, for example, if your religious beliefs endanger the health of your child, we, we don't allow that. In the same way, I believe that the education of a child should be held up at the same kind of standard as their physical health. Their mental health is equally important. We value science education for the future of our country and for technology and our, our viability of our economy. So, your right to religious belief shouldn't extend past uh, the basic things that we really value that we want our kids to learn. I have a friend whose homeschooling education was solely how to be a good wife and play piano for a church choir. As an adult, she considers her inadequate education to be a form of child abuse, and I would have to agree. In Alberta, there are no minimum standards at all for homeschool curriculum. I would have no problem with scientists who are Christians determining the minimum science standards, as long as they were educated in science. Just as I'd want someone educated in math to determine math standards, regardless of their religious beliefs. Far from AIG telling people not to teach their children about evolution, we actually advocate you teach your children all about it. Show them the massive scientific problems with it, and how the facts we see in the world actually support God's word. Is this some of that appeal to being open-minded that you were talking about before, Calvin? But frankly, if we could demonstrate that parents understood evolution enough to debunk it, that'd be great. They could obviously then answer any testing questions on the subject, even though they might not believe a word of it. I can answer all kinds of questions about Roman mythology without ever believing in Zeus, but if you're going to buy homeschool material from this man... I know how this building got here. Somebody put a whole load of bricks, put a bomb under it, there was an explosion, and look what happened. Do you think that's how the building came about? 
Then you will be teaching your kids pure straw man positions, not an accurate representation of the theory. I used to be an atheist. Wait, why do you get to say you used to be an atheist, but I can't say that I used to be a Christian? Don't make me say you were never really an atheist. So I have seen both sides of this origins argument firsthand. It was exposure to biblical creation that God used to open my eyes to the truth of scripture. And it was exposure to Ken Ham's material, while I was still a Christian and desperately wanting to believe, that showed me the lies of young earth creation. Our number one goal is getting answers to people, especially our youth, who desperately need them. And Ken Ham's visit to Alberta, Canada, will be an amazing time to get equipped to be able to defend your faith. I hadn't planned to take up any causes here, but I'm fired up by the overwhelming reaction to the events of the past week and the alarming and disturbing research that Shannon has unearthed on the complete lack of homeschool curriculum standards in my province. Something confirmed during my interview by Arnal of the Alberta Home Education Parent Society. Good morning. What do you think? Do Should homeschoolers be allowed to teach creationism to their children if they deem that to be what they want to do? Well, according to Alberta, um, homeschoolers have the right to teach their children any curriculum they want. Um, they can choose to teach the Alberta Program of Studies, but they, um, contrary to what Minister Egan said, they don't have to. They can follow a separate schedule of learning outcomes, which cover a basic education. So you don't have to, as a parent of the two taught kids at home, you don't have to follow any curriculum? No, you don't actually, and that's a really good thing. Let Ken come up here in April, but it's my goal to minimize the amount of homeschool material he sells here, particularly since most of the parents will be doing so with tax dollars. The radicalization of young people as they are being exposed to all sorts of nonsense in public schools isn't enough for the secularists. They want to control what goes into the minds of all our children, hence this attack on homeschoolers. It's my larger objective to pressure the education minister to establish some sort of minimum standards for homeschool students. This is not an attempt of any sort of restriction of religion, nor anyone's right to homeschool their children. But it seems reasonable that after 12 years of tax funding, that a student at least be required to show they can spell their name. As such, I'm looking to partner with anyone in Alberta who feels the same. I'm open to ideas on both how to limit Ken's conference sales and on how to start the process of basic regulation of homeschool curriculum. If you are involved in this area or have any ideas, please reach out to me on social media. I want to help. Well, thanks for coming on to talk about this, Paul. What's the name of that YouTube channel of yours, in case anyone wants to follow you or talk about this cause? My YouTube channel is called Paulogia, P-A-U-L-O-G-I-A. And I'd like to encourage your viewers to subscribe for videos addressing the actions of Answers in Genesis, as well as the science claims of Eric Hovind's Creation Today ministry, and others. And they can connect with me at Facebook and Twitter at Apologia Zero. I can certainly promise that if you like my content, then you're going to love Paul's as well. And don't forget to check out Vice Rhino. He's one of the best science claim channels on YouTube, and a personal favorite. I love Vice Rhino, right? Anyhow, thank you once again to my Patreon supporters who are so integral to the continuing quality and quantity of the content on this channel. If you are willing and able to help, please visit patreon.com slash apologia. Thanks for watching. I couldn't have become this actual thorn in the side of Answers in Genesis without you all. Until next time, later.